Hi everyone, welcome back. Appreciate you tuning in for another whiteboard series. I'm Dr. Stephen Cabral, board certified at Doctor of Naturopathy. Today we are talking about the worst fish for high mercury levels. If you've never heard about mercury before, it is an environmental based metal, a toxin, a heavy metal that we don't want inside of our body. When we put mercury in our body, whether it comes from fish or mercury amalgam, silver amalgams in our mouth or something else, we'd be really careful because it can lead to brain-based issues over time, like potentially Alzheimer's, dementia. It can lead to autoimmune issues. It can lead to thyroid issues, any inflammatory issue like autoimmune issues, skin issues, and so much more. Really detrimental for our nervous system and our health. So we wanna make sure that we, yes, we are following more of a Mediterranean-based diet, and yes, fish and omega-3s, like omega-3 fish oil, are very beneficial because what do they do? Well, they help balance healthy levels of inflammation in the body. And that helps with what? Cardiovascular disease, which is the number one killer in the entire world. So if we're able to balance healthy levels of omega-3s versus six, and I'll teach that in another video, and we're able to potentially eliminate the number one cause of mortality, well, again, we're gonna be living so much better and a better quality of life and living longer. And one of the ways to do that is potentially more through a Mediterranean diet and eating fish. So we wanna do that, but what we don't wanna do is get the mercury along with it. So I'm gonna share with you a chart that you can use as to which fish are most beneficial and which ones you can only eat every once in a while because the mercury levels are just too high, all right? So let's get into it right now. Uh, believe it or not, I talked about this topic over five years ago on my podcast, The Cabral Concept. Um, and this is episode number 12. So a little throwback way back in the day, way back in the day, I've done over 2000 podcasts now. This is episode 12. So I'm sure it'll sound a little strange listening to that 12th episode I ever did. Obviously I have a little bit more experience now. Hopefully it's gotten just a little bit better. Uh, but you can go to that download page and actually download this for complete, it's completely free. And that's just stephencabral.com forward slash zero one two. I'll put it in the show notes below. All right, so here is our low list. These are our low mercury fish. Now there's a lot of fish on this like cod and anchovies and catfish and clams and oysters and perch and salmon and sardines and trout. But I wanna make sure that you know that some of these are even better than others, okay? So even though they're all low in mercury, Many of them are random fish that you've probably never heard about, like whiting before, or maybe a butterfish, or maybe what else on there? Perch, you might not be eating a lot of hake. So what I wanna do is go over some of the best ones for you, okay? Wild shrimp, wild salmon, wild pollock, wild, where is it? Haddock, wild anchovies, although anchovies are pretty much all gonna be wild. Uh, and wild sardines as well. Uh, wild trout would be another one. Why? These can be really easy to find. They can be somewhat inexpensive, which is good. And they also can be higher in omega-3. So keep that in mind. Because even though we're talking about mercury today, remember, you want those omega-3s. Now, a couple of you have to be very careful of is tilapia right here and any of the shellfish. Shellfish, because they can start to... Uh, build up a lot more toxins because they are bottom feeders. But also number two with, uh, with tilapia, it's typically farm raised almost exclusively and a, and a pretty dirty fish for its own reason. So hopefully that's helpful. Now the medium level mercury, so these can be literally had daily. Okay, so low mercury fish can be eaten daily. These one or two times a month, so the medium, which is bass and carp and cod and croaker and halibut and smelts and lobster and monkfish and freshwater perch, sablefish, skate, snapper, tuna, and uh, weak fish, okay? So one or two times a month, uh, those are moderate mercury ones. And again, I'll give you this list to download. And the high mercury ones, which is less than one time a month. So one month at the most for these higher mercury fish and allow your body then to detox the mercury. So bluefish, grouper, uh, the large forms of mackerel like king, Spanish or Gulf, marlin, uh, ruffy, Chilean sea bass, which I know is a big favorite out there, shark, swordfish, tilefish, 
and canned tuna, all right, or yellowfin, big eye, ahi, or canned albacore. Now, that's the one that most people are eating, right? They're eating a lot of swordfish, and they're eating a lot of tuna. You have to be careful, because when I first did my first heavy metal test at 19 years old, I was higher in mercury, and we couldn't figure out why. But back then, I used to be big into natural bodybuilding, and I was eating a can of tuna every night on top of rice, and that can of tuna over time, well, the mercury levels started to soar. So I did a heavy metal detox. Mercury levels now are non-existent in my body, which I'm happy to say. Um, if you're looking at a good heavy metal detox, uh, I'll link that up below as well. And that's at equa.life. And you can also test your heavy metal labs uh, if you're ever looking for your mercury level too. So free download of this, right at stephencabral.com forward, uh, forward slash zero one two. And you can test your heavy metals or do one of the protocols at equi.life, and I'll link that up too. Again, just trying to give you all your options. Please also let me know if you have any questions. Always happy to help. Take care, and I'll talk to you soon.